here, hello, and welcome back to our hardware review of the brand new Synology RS1221 Plus. It is their new 8 bay rack mount solution, the follow up to the RS1219 Plus, and it takes advantage of a number of the new add ons and new features and functionality of the Synology SMB series in Plus. However, for some of us, it may not be the biggest jump possible. And today, I want to work out a few things. One, is it worth your data? Two, is it comparable better or worse than that of the desktop solution, the DS1821 Plus, um, released back in December 2020? And lastly, is this system going to be future-proof enough for you moving into the years to come? So let's tackle that first point. Does, does, does this deserve your data? Well, first let's look about what you're getting for your money. This system arrives uh, at £1,200, including VAT here in the UK. Obviously the tax where you are in the world will differ, um, but this is an 8 bay 2U solution. It's half depth. Today we're looking at the 2PSU version. It's a 40 centimetre deep rack mount there the single psu version at 30 centimeters deep and this system supports the very latest sata hard drive so again talking up to currently 18 tb from the likes of wd red pro and seagate iron wolf pro as well as ultra star w gold and exos and stuff like that and of course synology's own hard drives in the hat 5300 available currently up to 16 tb so it's a huge amount of storage potential inside but it's worth highlighting that this can be expanded. It can be expanded up to 12 bays. Generally, I don't talk about expansions very early in a video because it's not a cool, sexy subject for a start, but also it's one of those things that a lot of us don't really think about. We push it into the horizon. But expandability on this device is one of the three things about it I actually don't like a lot. Most of the things about the RS-1221 Plus I quite like, actually, and definitely it's a big old step up from its predecessor, the RS-1219 Plus, and certainly recommend it over that. But at the same time, the reason I highlight expandability as one of the three things I'm not overly keen on on this device is because it can only be expanded by an additional four bays. That's it. This eighth bay device, which supports SHR, by the way, Synology Hybrid RAID, which allows you to mix and match drives at a half populate and add bigger drives later, only allows you to add just four more drives with the RX-418. And if you're buying an 8-bay device with expandability, only 50% increase later in its life isn't actually that much. And given that we have looked at that 1821 Plus, and you will hear us talking about the 8-bay a lot, that 1821 Plus can be expanded by an additional 10 drives with two expansions. Why does this only support four more drives in that RX 418? And I think that's a bit of a glass ceiling in terms of expandability on this system because a lot of people that buy rack mount solutions don't just buy it because these are designed to take a hell of a knock of 24 7 use and be able to maintain that performance but they do it because they've got tremendous amounts of data to work through be it for surveillance customer accounts you know own staff using the collaboration suite in dsm and adding four more drives to me seems incredibly short-sighted maybe there's reasons for the pcie lanes inside but there are just little things about this device that this feels like it's had its wings clipped the tiniest bit. And I'd be really interested if um, Synology can let us know why that um, expandability can only be four drives. We talked about it with desktop devices before as well, that there are desktop expansions out there in the DX series, the 517 and the 12 um, bay expansion as well. But when it comes to the Rackman expansions, that 4 bay expansion on an 8 bay for me doesn't really make sense. But moving away from expandability, because again, I know it's such a dull subject, let's talk about the hardware architecture of this device. Again, it, uh, it arrives with the V1500B, a 2.264-bit uh, x86 quad-core processor. And although it doesn't have embedded graphics, it does still rank very, very well against the atom that came before it handling things like virtualization handling things like surveillance and the gamut the full range of applications in dsm 6.2 with seven on the horizon for full release but beta currently available so you do have some hardware under the bonnet to play with and i wouldn't really expect them to have lumped a xeon in a system like this when we look at um smaller overall capacity nazis the bulk of them kind of peak at this AMD processor there. The only exception, of course, being the RS1619 XS Plus. Uh, that device, of course, arrived with a Xeon, and it was a four-bay 
But again, it was a four bay that could add 12 bays of expansion. Again, I'll let go of that whole expansion thing. It's just annoying me. But that CPU still performs very, very well in terms of VMs, in terms of uh, multi-site um, backup and handling or the CMS and Active Backup Suite applications of creating that multi-tier backup solution. And of course, if you are someone that's buying uh, a solution like this, for its software as well as its hardware. And I don't just mean DSM and the U, uh, GUI. I am talking everything, including Hyper Backup, Active Backup Suite, um, the Synology Virtual Machine Manager, uh, the Surveillance Station, and of course the collaboration there, of Synology Chat, Synology Mail, Synology Drive, Synology Office, Synology, etc., etc., etc. And this is a system that has a lot of that power and capability inside. Moreover, it arrived with support of DDR4 memory with four gig on day one that can be upgraded up to a full 32 gig of DDR4 ECC memory error code correction. Um, uh, with, where um, if um, basically with a series of checksums and parity, it double checks data as it passes through the memory. And if a file changes throughout that process, it can then run that heel. Again, overly simplistic. Watch the video on ECC to find out more. I've already published it a while ago. So it does have some hardware inside. It may not have um, an aggressive Xeon, which is generally what everyone seems to go for with their shopping list when they're buying a rack mount solution, but it's still a very good processor. And again, it is an embedded uh, variant of the Ryzen family there. But moving away from that central processor, it is worth us touching on the second thing about this device that did niggle me a little bit. And that is the lack of NVMe M2 slots inside. Now, up until this point, I would say 80, maybe even 90% of the Synology solutions released in the last 12 months have arrived with NVMe SSD caching base. There's been a few exceptions like the 220 Plus and the uh, J series uh, at the very tail end of 2019. But for the most part, all these systems have arrived with M2 NVMe caching bays. Now, I know I would rather use them for raw storage, but I also know I would rather have them at all. And given this device's similarity in architecture to that of the 1821 Plus, the fact that it doesn't have those NVMe bays just makes me curious. Because with the same CPU, the same memory, and the same general architecture to the 1821 Plus, there must have been a point where Synology either looked at the PCIe lanes uh, or looked at the pre-existing controller board that they utilized and went, we won't include M2 on this which I think feels very short-sighted. Now, of course, there is a PCIe slot. There is, let's turn this around. Sorry about the noise near the mic. There is a PCIe upgrade slot that allows you to add an M2 NVMe cache card in there, the M2D20, or the combo card in the E10 M20T1, which allows you to add two NVMe M2 slots and a 10 GBE port. That slot alone, PCIe Gen 3 times eight, provides up to 8,000 megs per second throughput between a card and the main controller board. So there is a lot of potential there, but it still seems crazy to me that you would need to upgrade to get that feature and functionality that is more readily available in the lower priced eight bay desktop version of this device. In fact, the ports and connections on this system are, you know, pretty similar to that of the eight bay. They both arrive with four LAN ports, those LAN ports there on the rear being one GBE each, which is good to see. So again, one GBE, lag, four GBE, good to have four ports, sure, but where's the larger than uh, one GBE? I get that they have to keep this within a price portfolio, but in 2021, one GBE feels a little bit restricted. It feels a bit reined in. There's USB 3 ports, of course, which can be used for UPSs and a small degree of compatible USB 3 devices as well as assigned to VMs. But Synology doesn't really take advantage of USB that much. You can use, obviously, a USB backup, and we've got fully featured uh, videos on that one. But the USB 3 ports on this can't be used in any kind of direct accessory capacity. There's no KVM support on this. Not a lot of people would see the point of that on a system like this. But it still feels like they've played it safe with this device. It is a good solution. I'm not going to, at the end of this video, I'm not going to say that the RS-12 
21 Plus is a bad solution. I think it's a very, very good half-depth solution. I think the hardware architecture you're getting is very, very good. And although I mentioned it's 1,200 quid, including the VAT, that is the single PSU version, because there is, as you see here in front of you, a dual controller version. With this device, uh, not dual controller, dual PSU version. So with this device, you're able to withstand a whole PSU failing. So again, these are 350 watt PSUs. Again, if one breaks, you slot it out, get a new one in your warranty, three years by default, extendable to five with the EW202 extension. So, you know, it has a lot going for it. It is a good device, but it still feels like it's had its wings clipped in small places. Most people won't notice that, but that small amount of expandability being limited to four um, four drives rather than larger than that, the one GBE rather than greater than one GBE, which I know a lot of people notice, and the lack of M2 inside certainly just makes me a little bit apprehensive let's put it like that because i do think as a solution it is very very good notwithstanding the enormous degree of applications in dsm i think there's a huge range of features and functionality in dsm that you cannot get anywhere else it is a great platform it's incredibly intuitive and everything we've seen of dsm7 of course for business more so than anyone else it's an incredibly slick and user-friendly platform but whether this is the system to be using it with is another question entirely. If you're using it for surveillance, you've got that great surveillance station application, and you've got two camera licenses included, which I know sometimes ruffles some feathers, but this system, if it's anything like the six bay and the eight bay that we've tested already, it will run surveillance station beautifully well with all of those clients, as well as via the web browser. On top of that, as you can clearly see, there is a lot of cooling and fan measures in this. It's not gonna be the quietest NAS, but it is a rack mount. Rack mount devices can't really have cooling systems or passive ventilation around the edges because they can be stacked up or cabinets are closed in. So all of the cooling has to happen through the device and out the rear of the device over the heat sinks, over uh, the PCBs and the transistors inside. So this does do a very good job for such a compact system and we've got some um if you go into the uh, link below into nas compares you can see a lot more of the breakdown of the when we remove the lid and taking it apart you'll be able to see a lot more about the controller board inside and see how they've done a really good job of managing the space with more than half of the space inside being the storage of course but still managing a great airflow inside so in terms of construction, it is a great solution. In terms of the software, it's near enough unbeatable than anyone else. But it has to be said that in terms of hardware, this does feel very safe. And I think a number of you who are looking at rack mount solutions that are thinking future, future, future proof, you've got to think about the scaling of your company and whether this is the solution for you or whether you should spend a few hundred quid more and get something a bit more Z on. Now, what this device is currently available pretty much worldwide, let's be honest, like a lot of their solutions. Um, and this is not the last Ryzen rack mount we're going to see. We have already heard about uh, a 20, uh, the 2421 Plus. We've already talked about on NAS Compare. So there is going to be a bigger variant of this. So if you are looking for more storage off the bat, that 12 bay device can be expanded by another 12 bays instantly. Um, removing that as any kind of barrier. Yes, you have to pay a bit more, but you are talking about a lot more storage and bang for your buck. And a number of businesses that look at rack mount solutions like this are thinking about that longevity of their storage. Now, as mentioned, it does arrive with support of SHR Synology Hybrid Ray, something that generally on rack mount devices, you just don't find. SHR with its fluidity in the ray configurations, it's just something that isn't in traditional RAID. Arguably traditional RAID, like RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, etc. They do give you a bit more performance, it has to be said, but I think a lot of people like the fluidity of storage in SHR, and it's nice that a rack mount like this has it. Also, let's not overlook that half depth rack mount chassis, because rack mount now doesn't necessarily mean any more giant boxes that can barely fit on camera, let alone on your desk. In fact, this is one of the few rack mounts I've featured on the channel where both the box and the unit are on the same camera feed. Generally, when it comes to rack mounts, you're paying for these enormous power consuming, you know, behemoth monolith type devices. And this seems to find a line between desktop and rack mount very, very well. And its support of BTRFS and the benefits that brings as a file system can't be overlooked either. Synology is still the first brand to really jump on the bandwagon in commercial 
NAS to embrace BTRFS and the advantages it brings across all of their apps as well, getting a lot out of it. And although other brands have started featuring BTRFS, no other brand has taken advantage of it on their first party apps as much as Synology, which is another great reason for this device to exist as a bridge between the desktop and the rack mount. It just feels a little safe and for a number of you out there that are buying a solution that are thinking longevity, thinking future proofing, maybe spend a little bit more on a Xeon, maybe spend a little bit more on a bigger device. But for the rest of you, this compact 2U rack mount, it ticks a lot of boxes. I hope you've enjoyed this hardware review. We're of course going to be doing software overviews and application testing on this device in following in videos coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for those and subscribe. Visit the link in the description to the full hardware review of this at NAS Compares. And if you've enjoyed this video and helps me know what you guys like, please just click that like button because it helps me understand which videos you guys like the most and what to really focus in on. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.